back with the WMAY Morning News Feed. And let's get your calls now on the outcome of the Kyle Rittenhouse case. The verdicts on all counts, not guilty. The defense attorney's use of self-defense. Persuading the jurors that there was reasonable doubt that... uh, the prosecution alleging Kyle Rittenhouse committed murder. So this outcome causing uh, a lot of debate and seeming to really show the political divide on um, the justice system, on how some individuals are treated while others aren't treated the same way, and the perceptions that uh, permeates various groups Uh, But I want to hear from you now, Uh, those of you out there who've uh, been watching this closely, uh, who've seen uh, the outcome, uh, and what's your take? 217-629-7970. That's the phone number here for the WMAY Morning News Feed. And again, 217-629-7970. I did want to just take a moment, uh, the last segment, uh, mentioning that uh, uh, Citadel owner Ken Griffin uh, bought a copy of the U.S. Constitution for $53.2 million, uh, and uh, he outbid uh, some of the uh, uh, digital currency investors that were pulling their money together to try to buy this, uh, and uh, it's the the most expensive such document purchased um, at an auction, uh, more so than a uh, Leonardo da Vinci diary that Bill Gates bought back in, what, like the 80s or 90s or something? Uh, so, uh, what's going to happen with this particular copy of the U S constitution, Ken Griffin's going to give it to a museum down in Arkansas, I believe. Uh, so we just wanted to make sure we got uh, all of that out there for you, but now it's time for you to sound off at 217-629-7970. The outcome of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial with the verdict being not guilty on all counts. Good morning. You're on WMAY. Yes. I wanted to go back just a short thing about, um, the, the assassination. My husband also just mentioned he was just getting just, ready. Just real quick, just to reset for everybody out there. Also, today is the 58th anniversary or remembrance or uh, the 58th year since uh, JFK was assassinated, November 22nd, 1963. So, caller, go ahead. Well, he had jo- joined the Guard. He was getting ready to go to basics out of Fort Lee, Virginia, right when this happened. But he had to say the reason they were scared, too, after to find out Lee Harvey. Harry Oswald White was from Russia. And we, like you say, your dad was watching the spy planes and everything. Right. So no one knew what was happening. No. There, was, so there was mass school, confusion. I mean, it could have Absolutely. been a World War III. Yeah. You know, you don't know. He, he, his life is very simple, but you didn't know at that time. You didn't know nothing. So We you, definitely didn't have the information, uh, you know, uh, fire hydrant that we have nowadays. But even that fire hydrant of information, we have and i appreciate the call uh we've seen that play on all different emotions uh, on the kyle rittenhouse case for instance uh what's fascinating is seeing people who a year ago uh would have quickly been jumped in and said hey you know kyle rittenhouse uh he shot some black people uh there there were people in in the public who for some reason had that in their mind, but there were no black victims in this case. Uh, and uh, also the the idea that Kyle crossed state lines with a gun, that is also not true. So even though we have a lot more capability of getting out information, uh, we have a lot of misinformation as well in the mix. And some of the mainstream media uh, that have been talking about this case for years have done a poor job of actually being factual with what they're saying, what they're putting out there. And I think that that's played a lot into this uh, as well. So your response to the uh, verdict in the Kyle Rittenhouse case, good morning, you're on WMAY. Hey, Greg, just to kind of touch on what you had just said, you know, we spent the last 20 months or so talking about misinformation and disinformation, stuff being taken down on social media and news sites, et cetera. You know, this case was full of misinformation from the beginning from the mainstream media sources. And, you know, especially at the beginning, you saw a lot of things that turned out to be true taken down from uh, social media sites because it didn't fit whatever their algorithm or narrative or policies are. Um, I don't think anybody that watched this case and kind of followed it, you know, kind of followed as best they could with it, 
um, was surprised at the verdict of it. Uh, my curiosity is, is now that this is done and over, is the Giswell, Maxine Giswell trial going to get the same media coverage that the Rittenhouse trial got? And you're Thanks talking about, yeah, I appreciate that. And you're talking about um, the culprit in the uh, Jeffrey Epstein case, the uh, child sex trafficking case. Uh, it's got a lot of other um, pretty prominent names attached to it. Um, and uh, some, some, you know, <laughs> some revelations there that aren't going to be pretty. Uh, and listen, I, I get that sentiment. It's like, you know, why not have that case be full live streamed like Kyle Rittenhouse's case was with the uh, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell case? But you got to think there's a lot of victims in the Ghislaine Maxwell case that were minor children at that time. Do you want all of that to be exposed in as far as those victims and having to be re-victimized, so to speak? So I've seen that argument against that, but I, I get where you're going in as far as, you know, we have a justice system in this country that I think a lot of people in other countries, they're, they're kind of taken aside they're like whoa you guys had cameras in here and you put the decision into the hands of randomly selected jurors and not government officials uh so we have a justice system in this country uh that uh, really does in a way take the decisions out of the hands of the state and puts it into the the hands of uh, a jury of uh, the accused peers, uh, and that's something that uh, not every country has, uh, but we have that in this country, and it wasn't the state that made the decision in the Kyle Rittenhouse case. It wasn't the media that made the decision in the Kyle Rittenhouse case. It wasn't President Trump. It wasn't President Obama. No, it was a jury of Kyle Rittenhouse's peers that heard all the evidence that made the decision not guilty, just as down in Florida, you had a case where a man was facing murder charges and uh, he was alleged to have um, uh, killed uh, or been involved in uh, a shooting death that uh, took the life of his 21-year-old uh, girlfriend. Uh, and this particular case uh, led to the charges being found uh, not guilty of murder and attempted murder. And this is down in Florida where you had uh, an individual uh, sleeping in a home and uh, ultimately uh, SWAT teams come in, they're serving a warrant, but uh, Andrew Coffey didn't know there was a SWAT team and he grabbed his weapon and opened fire. And the defense used a self-defense argument and Andrew Coffey, a black man, was found not guilty of murder and attempted murder uh, because he did not know that a SWAT team was serving a warrant and he grabbed a gun and in self-defense used that firearm. So a jury of his peers hearing that evidence decided to find him not guilty because it was self-defense. That was the mindset he was in at that time. So you can see how, again, it's not the media that's making these decisions on guilt or innocence. It's not the president that's making the decision on guilt or innocence. It is a jury of the peers getting the evidence presented to them by prosecutors and defense attorneys that are making the determinations of guilt or innocence. Uh, your reaction to the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict? Good morning. What's up, Greg? Hey. Well, here's my thing. I'm more concerned about this idiot that we have run in our state saying commenting on this and how it was unjust when every weekend several people are murdered in Chicago. And well, that's just how it is. <clears throat> that's not how it is. I mean, this kid was found innocent for a reason because what he did was justifiable. I mean, maybe he shouldn't have been there. You can argue that all day long. But should the protesters who were rioters crashing, you know, windows and lighting things on fire, should they have been there as well? That's exactly right. No, they should not either. Ah, this sounds terrible, but <laughs> if George Floyd would have just got back in the backseat of that police car, none of this would have happened. He'd been out of jail by now. He'd still be alive. Well, he, but hey, listen, I mean, he did get into the back of the car uh, and uh, they took him out because he was complaining about uh, having trouble breathing. And, and I don't want to conflate things because, listen, you know, regardless of what happened on the streets in Kenosha, we're not looking as to why people were there, why the protesters were there, why Kyle Rittenhouse was there. That's not that's not what this case was about. This case was about a short span of time where Kyle Rittenhouse shot and killed two people and injured a third just that short span of time that's all his case was about and the case was not about blm the case was not about uh, uh who, who you know george floyd or jacob blake 
Uh, this case was about this particular moment in time that the allegations were Kyle Rittenhouse was, was charged with murder. And the jury heard about all the facts of that case, and they came to their determination. Uh, 217-629-7970. Again, just as uh, the jury down in Florida came to the conclusion that Andrew Coffey IV um, uh, shot back at police out of self-defense, and they said, yes, that was indeed self-defense, and he's not guilty of murder. Uh, 217-629-7970 is the phone number. Good morning. Morning, Greg. How you doing, bud? Good. Yourself? Not bad. Hey, I don't have a problem with the uh, verdict in the Kyle Rittenhouse case. I mean, it very well looked like self-defense. And you know me, man. I'll argue against guns from time to time, but I don't have a problem with it. But I think what he's going to find out here in the long run is even though he was found not guilty, his civil trial, I think he's going to be paying out the wazoo for the rest of his life. Um, yeah, and that's something here. You know, you've got the difference between a criminal case and yep. a civil case, uh, and uh, we'll see how that plays out. And there's a lot of others who are saying that Kyle Rittenhouse needs to go after the media for, uh, you know, essentially lying and saying that uh, he was a white supremacist or that he crossed state lines with a gun, which was not the case, uh, or uh, alluding to a variety of other things. But it just, it just, you know, the, the we have to be very cognizant. Of yes, we've got a lot of different channels where media is pumped through, and we get all kinds of information. But sometimes it's just misinformation. Good morning, you're on WMAY. Good morning. If my memory serves me correctly, the Springfield race riot started off with mob mentality and a lie of a black man raping a white woman. Mob mentality never accomplishes anything very good. As far as the trial goes, I'm glad he got off, and I believe the people that are think that an injustice has occurred it just goes against their narrative and hopes and dreams of banning guns and self-defense measures and i think that bill clinton's probably rest a lot easier after jeff Epstein, Epstein was killed with those bogus circumstances the cameras accidentally getting turned off blah 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 all right okay now now we don't have to talk about epstein uh it's totally separate but uh i think um you know it's interesting that you do bring up the 1908 massacre uh and you're right misinformation led to a bunch of white people rioting and going and and looting and smashing businesses and killing black residents in this neighbor in this community back uh, more than 100 years ago and it was really driven by misinformation and it highlights how mob mob action it, it should not be tolerated uh and uh some very bad things can happen when misinformation uh spreads uh, and uh, it's one of those things you have to really guard against. 217-629-7970. We'll take another call here. Your reaction to the Kyle Rittenhouse uh, verdict. Good morning. Well, here's my thing, too, Greg. Nobody is even saying a word about the prosecutor pulling up the weapon, aiming it with his finger on the trigger. Yeah, there's that. And the argument, they're, they're going to say, well, we know it's not loaded. You know what? Neither was the gun that... Uh, Mr. Genius making the Rust movie wasn't loaded either, but look what happened there. I mean, that man should be disbarred for just doing that. Well, again, uh, you know, we're, we're starting to mix uh, uh, cases and going in other you know directions, and I just want to talk about the the case of Kyle Rittenhouse and uh, the uh, the frustrations that some in the community feel, uh, and they feel that uh, there's unequal justice. Uh, but I don't know if that if that plays out if you look at cases in the vacuums that they are in, right? If you want to say that uh, what if Kyle Rittenhouse was black? Well, we do have down in Florida a case of a black man who uh, was found not guilty of murder um, because his frame of mind was self-defense, and the jury heard that defense, and they came to their decision that, indeed, Andrew Coffey down in Florida uh, shot at police in self-defense. Uh, so, you know, we, I think we have to take a step and, and hear what people's concerns are. Absolutely. Why they're frustrated, why they feel the way they feel that there's injustice in the system. But I also think it's important that we highlight that, you know, a case is within a case of its own and something that uh, you have to look at all the facts within that specific case, making broad generalizations or taking direct action uh, to smash windows or whatnot. Uh, that's that's not going to help. Um, with the with the conversation. Good morning. You're on WMAY. Good morning. I think the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict was was 
perfect. I think it was uh, perfect carry, uh, carry on out of justice. Uh, he was defending himself. Uh, I'm a firm believer in your own self-defense. You need to be able to defend yourself when needed. I, I honestly think I wish I wish that Arbery guy down in uh, Atlanta would have been carrying a gun while he was running because he could have killed those three guys in self-defense also. That would have been perfectly right. So well, whether you're and, white and or that, black, and that's, a, and that's a case. In that, in the Ahmad Arbery case is something I haven't paid much attention to, but I think that's the verdict of that is going to be pretty uh, uh, impactful as well. So maybe we'll have to get all the details in that case out here soon and uh, talk about that. Uh, good morning. You're on WMAY. The bottom line is he's, he's innocent. He was proven innocent by a court of law, just like the young man in Florida was proven innocent by a court of law. Uh, we've got to get past this black-white issue, and, and they, that's what it's been made into, and it's wrong. And as far as the civil suits go, if they sue him, if I were him, I would sue every individual that was trying to attack me that night, especially the man trying to match my head. I mean, he's got just as much of a right to sue them as they do to him. Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, so we'll see what all plays out uh, post uh, not guilty verdict in the in the Rittenhouse case. Uh, good morning. You're on WMAY. Yeah, we got to remember that two moms lost their sons as a result of Rittenhouse's actions. Absolutely. Yeah. So he deserves something. I mean, you don't show up to a city that you don't live in and you take an AR-15. He was looking for trouble and he found it. And he should have gotten something. But aside from why he decided to get there, again, we're only looking at the specifics of that particular case. And right. it, we do have to recognize, yes, people lost their lives. Uh, absolutely. And there's families that are uh, hurting from this. No question about it. Uh, but at the same time, the circumstances of the case show that Kyle, according to a jury, and you know, President Biden says we have to respect the jury because uh, that's the system of right. justice we have in this in this country. Uh, yep. They found that it was self defense, so you really have to make sure that that's uh, uh, first and foremost. Good morning, you're on WMAY. Oh, let me, let me turn you up. up. Okay, go ahead, you're on the air. Yes, my reaction is that progressive liberal Democrats don't want people in this country to understand what it means to be innocent until proven guilty, and if they continue to spread misinformation and prey upon the ignorant. That's what we're going to have is we're going to have people tried and convicted through social media and through ignorance. And, and this is a perfect example of that. Well, but I don't think it is a perfect example of that because he was ultimately found not guilty again. No, it's only, a, it's only a matter of time though, if they continue to chip away at what this country is founded upon, which there's a never ending assault every single day of every single thing traditional to this country and one of the uh, underpinnings is innocent until proven guilty and getting a jury of your peers and what have they done even when a guy gets a jury of his peers and is found in a, or not guilty they attack that verdict and they want change just like they want to change in the electoral college when their candidate didn't win. Yeah. I don't know if we're ever going to see any movement to change our uh, jury system because uh, it's unique in the world and um, uh, does not allow for mob mentality or for media misinformation to, uh, to dictate what happens guys. I appreciate it. We get, uh, had full phone lines. We'll have to uh, leave it there, but uh, it's always good to hear uh, a variety of opinions.